Hey, welcome to Bollocks Talks and Tangents. It is Thursday and it's 634 and that means we're bringing some laugh and learn. And today it's just the Blevins boys in the studio. I'm, I'm sitting in here in Studio B and Blake is pushing all the buttons and making it happen in there in the uh, control room, I guess is what it's called. The brain of the operation, right Blake? Yes, unfortunately, uh, uh, some someone decided, someone else decided to go to a concert, so, so that's that's why we have the the open uh, co-host chair. Yeah, so Len- Lenny's at the Billy Strings concert. He wasn't planning, but not the Harry Styles concert. Not the Harry Styles because I've been confusing those all week long. Uh, but he's at Billy Strings tonight. That's why he's not here. He'll be back with us next week. Um, excited to have him back in studio. But we got an amazing show. Uh, we have some. Uh, of course, we got to tell you about our great sponsors. Uh, we, our whiskey of the week is Angel's Envy, uh, and it, it came in a little strong. I took a big swig right before we went on air, and it, it, it kind of hit me a little hard. So if I don't talk right, you know what it is. Um, but we're just uh, happy you guys are here. If you would, hit that share button for us. Um, we we want to make sure everyone gets out there and hears about our great sponsors, and hopefully we teach you something today and make you laugh along the way. So, uh, first thing I got to get us started off with is our sponsor, City Gates Distillery and St. Augustine Distillery. I'm telling you right now, the best tasting in town. If you want to go try out different whiskeys, um, unique whiskeys, go to City Gates. If you're just a classic bourbon guy, go to St. Augustine Distilleries. Both locations, check them both out. Both of them have great tastings if you want to go there. Cheshire. Is it collisions and customs or customs and collisions, Blake? It is uh, customs and collisions. Why did you tell me wrong the first week? I have it written down on the whiteboard completely wrong. Either way, they're the best in town about putting your car back together. Um, they, they have the most advanced paint uh, box. Uh, they put your car in, they paint it, and then they put it in a, uh, a huge room and bake your car is what they do, and it's, it makes it come out flawless. But go check out Cheshire Customs and Collision. A Bear Kresge and Associates, these guys are so busy this week. Um, you know, Tuesday, I'm sure they were hitting that panic button, but you know what? They always take great care of me. Uh, they're the best in town. Don't do your taxes by, by yourself. Go out, ask for help, and go see these guys, A Bear Kresge and Associates. All right, one of these places right here that I like to spend my free time, and that is Meehan's Irish Pub. It's three bars in one. They got Johnny's upstairs, the Oyster Bar. They got the pub uh, inside downstairs, and then they got the backyard uh, where they have live music out there. Great atmosphere, wonderful people, and some great food there. All right, St. Augustine Pirate Museum. To me, this museum, we're so fortunate to have this museum in St. Augustine. They have over 800 artifacts uh, the Croce family brought brought this up from Key West. It's been an amazing addition. They do so much more than just the Pirate Museum. Uh, Cindy and their entire staff over there. Uh, I think they got something happening at the Colonial Quarter tonight. Uh, they got live music there constantly. Just check out the Colonial Quarter and the Pirate Museum. All right, this next one is a place. Uh, I'm probably there at least once a week. It is on Sponsor Row, and that's River and Fort and. I'm telling you, the view is incredible. What are the two things you can see from the view? So you can see the river. And what else? That's next to the fort. Oh, okay. So you can see those two. But I'm telling you, uh, we were going to do Blevins Best, and one of the things I was going to do was the best appetizer in town. And I'm telling you, they have what's called like a grand seafood tower. Blake. 
It was insane. It's very, inc- it's very incredible. insane. It feeds three people on its own. It's almost its own meal. It's the best appetizer in town. No, actually, no. There was actually six of us that day when when, when, when we got the when, when we got the seafood tower. By the time we I, barely finished it, and we still didn't get it all done. So, all right, here we go. And these guys, um, fa- great family business. Another one, uh, Palm Valley Golf Course, uh, up there in in Palm Valley. Um, it just. It's been around since the late 1980s, owned by one family, still owned by the exact same family. Has the best driving range in this area. If you want to learn how to play golf, it's the most affordable location. You can learn how to play golf. They're working uh, with their Tracer Golf, which is a virtual golf uh, uh, simulator. And you actually hit the balls out into uh, the driving range. So you get to see the ball fly just like you would at um, Top Golf. And you're paying a quarter of the price. I'm telling you, it's an amazing experience. You can rent your own little bay there and just have a, a fun night, couple hours. It's not like playing a, um, you know, a five-hour course at, at one of these courses that costs you two hundred dollars. So go out and check these guys out. Wonderful family, and they also have just an amazing, amazing uh, uh, setup out there. Beautiful course. All right, Blake. We have our word origins. I know, I know you have a couple word origins you want to talk about. One of them's day appropriate. So I'm going to let you start with uh, the day appropriate word origin that you have. Because today is 420. Yes, for, yes, it is, uh, and, 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 and unfortunately, our our, our, our great boss is is, is, is is celebrating this day very appropriately. So, 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 so I actually have two, two, two words based on today's special day. So the first one I'm going to do is 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 a nickname for this for this thing, Mary Jane. Mary Mary Jane. Today is 420, which is all we we guys they talk about 420 being the ultimate time to smoke weed. So Mary Jane, how did it become Mary? How did marijuana become Mary Jane? Yeah, so so it's, a, it's actually pretty simple compared, compared to like most of our sayings so far. So Mary Jane, so Mary Jane is actually just the the English translation of marijuana. So so it's basically Mary or Maria is is Mary, Juana, it's it's well Juana, uh, Spanish Juana is is Jane. So that's that's a pretty simple translation. But, but of course, here in the United States, it, it didn't it didn't reach like 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 mass like sayings on the on So there's no great story behind it. It's just a translation. Yes. Come on, but Blake, I, I'm telling you, you, better step up on the next one. Hey, hey, but, but we'll say that. But but but, but I did learn that actually gained the the saying actually did gain popularity popularity because because of Rick James's song, Mary Jane. Mm, okay. Yep. Um. All right. So mine. Mine, I didn't go with the Mary Jane theme, but I'm going to go ahead and let you do your, your munchies, too, because those two stay together and they flow together. So go ahead and do your second word origin. Yeah, so, so, so obviously the munchies, like, the, the, like we, 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 we all get, like, the cravings. If, 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 we, if we have a little bit of the weed, uh, uh, yeah. So, so basically, so that started in the 1970s here, here in the United States. But actually, there was actually a 1916 UK candy bar with that name. So... So 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 a lot of people so so actually there is a U.S. and U.K. derivative of of the phrase munchie. So so basically, so when we when we talk about the munchies, it means okay, I'm gonna grab a bag of chips. And if you're in England, they're talking about a candy bar. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. And, and 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 plus also like so, but and also a lot of experts are now saying like like you can actually get munchies. Well, but not only through uh, cannabis, but also through like alcohol. Like, like, and you, you can attest to that. Yeah, I get I get hungry um, when when I come home. Uh, so I mean, if I've had a couple of drinks, and it's you know, uh, like I don't know if you've ever heard Becca say this. I don't get drunk. I just don't eat enough. So you know, sometimes I I gotta soak it up. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and 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 we definitely had some great. Uh, like like little questions of the day answers involving food during this special week. Yeah, what's your go-to munchy food? And by the way, uh, I didn't get my funyuns. I talked about it on the morning show, and I still need to get funyuns tonight. You didn't mention you didn't mention funyuns on the morning. Oh no, show. no, I mentioned. Yeah, I did. I mentioned it. It was in the comments. I was like, oh, I got to get some funyuns. Oh yeah. So, um, all right. So my two are completely different. One of them does have food in it. It's got butter. Mm. Okay. And if you want to butter someone up. Any idea where this comes from? Because I didn't, I did not see this coming at all. I, I, I really hope it has something safe for work, Dad. It is safe for work. It's not, it's not like 
greasing somebody up. When you butter someone up, it's kind of like uh, building them up, trying to get them to sway in your way. Well, believe it or not, this comes from ancient India. All right? And it was tough to make butter. Um, so in ancient India, what they would do is they would take butter balls and actually throw them at the gods or deities' statues hmm. as a sign of respect because they worked so hard for this and they're spending it on the god or deity. And that's where buttering someone up comes from. We're talking thousands of years ago is when this happened. And I, I thought the term you know, was more recent but it's actually from thousands of years ago to butter someone up. Yeah, but but, but now but now I wonder though, like 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 does the like the, the, does like each like different like type of butter like represent like a different thing? Like so, so like let's say like like it's like country crock butter, like throwing at someone that doesn't mean like 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 good respect. But boy, 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 it's like I can't believe it's not butter. Does I, that mean I, it's I'm disrespect? pretty sure in ancient India, they weren't flinging around margarine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they were churning it. They had to work hard for this butter. Yeah. So that's what made it a compliment is you had to work so hard for it that you were willing to sacrifice it to the God. That's definitely interesting, though. Yeah, so, I mean, you, you know, they didn't have variety. They didn't have crunchy country crock or uh, parquet or whatever whatever some of the margarines were. Yeah. They, I mean, they had to work for this butter. Yeah. So it, it meant a little bit more at that time. Yeah. All right, the other one is, and this is uh, a term I don't think I've ever been able able to do. And it's let one's hair down, you know, and it's kind of like taking it easy, getting out and just kind of taking it easy and let one's hair out. And, and Blake just fluffed through his hair as I, as I made that statement. Jealous much? And this dad? one, yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm bitter. I'm bitter. And this one, this one goes back a little ways too. It goes back to medieval times. Mm. Okay. So uh, an aristocratic woman of medi medieval times they were obliged to appear in elegant hairdos. So they were not allowed to just go out with their hair down. It had to be decorative or they would have been um, thought of as a harlot or something like that. So in medieval times, they had to have the hair up usually very tight, very decorative. And the only time they were allowed to even have their hair down was when they were at home and they were relaxing. Awesome. So it goes all the way back to medieval times. So you can butter someone up by letting them let their hair down. All right. Speaking of butter, all right, uh, one of our topics today is all about food. All right. Are you, I mean, are you, is, is the food topic okay with you? Because, I mean, you, we have food and cars is what we want to talk about. Are you good with the food one? Well, we're definitely a, there's definitely a connection between the two with, with, with all of our drive foods. Uh, and, and 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 think like a lot of our foods that we chose and can be ordered that drive through. So yeah, I remember when you were a kid, you we would say, "What are we going to do for dinner?" And you'd say, um, "Are we going to sit down? Or are we going to go to the drive through?" That was your that was like your thought process of how we selected uh, restaurants. So and we do we did choose drive through quite a bit, but I'm not talking about drive through food. I'm talking about like all the way back to where the foods actually come from. All right. I mean, um, you know, and I, I have a couple, but I was going to start off with like the basics, like the fruits. OK, I'm going I'm to throw some at you and I'm, I'm OK. And I want you to answer rapid fire. Don't give it too much thought. OK. All right. Here we go. I'm giving giving you these. Where's the rest of them? Uh Oh, I lost them. All right. Uh, the banana. Uh, we eat a lot of bananas. Brazil. All right. All right, that is incorrect. It actually is Southeast Asia. All right, and it it actually came from a swamp called Cook, hmm. K U K. All right, and they cultivated the bananas, and they spread westward and from Southeast Asia. And there's a lot of different varieties. Uh, in Madagascar is now a region where they produce um, probably more, more bananas than any place else. So, um, you know, what's your, favorite, what's your favorite meal with a banana? So to definitely say, like, my favorite meal is, is basically like a peanut butter, a banana, honey sandwich. So basically, basically, you take two pieces of bread, put peanut butter on both, 
then then you basically chop up like half a banana, like put 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 put, 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 put like the rounds like like like, like evenly on both sides. Then then drizzle a little bit. Then drizzle like a tablespoon of honey. Mm-hmm. Delicious. All right, all right. So, but Asia is where it comes from. We'll say creamy peanut butter. Though I don't like crunchy. You don't like crunchy. All right, get stuck in your teeth. Watermelon. Ooh, I'm gonna say South Africa. It, it it is from Africa. Very good. I'll give you a point for that one. Uh, there are more than a hundred varieties of watermelon. Wild, wild watermelon seeds have been found in prehistoric Lebanon uh, site. Um, evidence also exists that the watermelon was cultivated in ancient Egypt. Mm. Okay. The peach. I'm going to give you a hint. It's not Georgia. Yeah, I know. It's I, not Georgia. I'm going to say it is. My hint's probably James and the Giants peach with Wild Doll. He was English, right? Uh, I don't. I don't remember. Okay. I, so, so I'm, so I'm going to say. Uh, I'm going to say hmm, France. Also, uh, Asia. It's it's China. Oh. So it originated in China, and it was uh, it was kind of brought back with uh, with Marco Polo. So, and the reason that the peach grows so well in Georgia is the way the climate is. It's between thirty two and fifty uh, degrees Fahrenheit, and they don't have extreme winters, mm-hmm. but it's cool enough to make the peach actually work out. Yeah, but, so but, 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 but can't be too cold, can't be too hot. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but, but do, do, do you know what my favorite like like peach thing ever is? The peach milkshake at Chick Fil A, so good. <sighs> Sound that sounds good right now. I'm I'm gonna stick with my uh, angels angels envy though. All right, here we go, Blake. Here here's one. Um, tomatoes. Ugh, tomato. I feel really wrong if, if I get this wrong because I know how much that Thelma loves growing tomatoes for you and giving you tomatoes. Yeah. So, so she and, probably knows this. And Thel- Thelma's Thelma's my mom. Yeah. So yeah, so, grandma. So I'm gonna say, hmm. Yeah, this is South Af- This is South American. So I'm gonna say, like some somewhere in Colombia. Dude, that's you're you're nailing this. You're actually crushing it. It's it's not Colombia, but it is uh, southern Mexico, which is super close to that. Mm. And it's the Aztecs uh, in in Mesoamerica. Um, but uh, in the U.S., the tomato when it first got here, um, people thought it was poisonous, mm. and it was uh, because of the acidity and and uh, it was if it wasn't cleaned properly. It could cause a lot of sickness. Yeah. So in the early 1600s here in the American colonies, someone who grew the tomatoes, who was uh, a person who was a farmer, actually sat on the town square and ate like five tomatoes to prove that they weren't poisonous. Ugh. And But before that, it was actually uh, even questioned um, because of the Christian uh, faith. They were thinking that the fruit that Eve bit in in Eden was actually a tomato because it never really says what it was mm. because it, it it was a kind of a, a demon fruit at that time. Yeah. So 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 did they actually say that tomato is actually a fruit? Like I know it's like the number one like question like 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 with like a lot of people like did like it has it officially been confirmed that tomato is a fruit? It or? comes from a seed, so yeah, it's officially a fruit. Right. But what? But what? What does it say? Like why? Why? Like most people classify it as a vegetable, though. Uh, I think. I mean, just I think it's just because it's it's kind of been marketed that way. Mm. You know, it's it's just always kind of been marketed that way in the produce section. You know. Yeah, that's but it. I mean, even the fruits in the produce section. So I don't understand why why it got separated like that. So, mm-hmm. um, all right. Um, I'm not. I'm gonna skip cabbage there. Um, one that you and I both like: apples. Oh, apples. Ah. Uh, this definitely, is, dang, a tree. Like so, I could. I, I think of like trees. Like uh, like obviously with like so it has to be like 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 high levels of trees. I'm gonna say, ooh, Russia. Not too far off. It's central Central Asia, Kazakhstan. Hmm. All right. Um. The whole Johnny Appleseed myth came about where uh he he went around and he, Johnny Appleseed was a real person. Really. He was a real person, and he wanted to um, make this uh, the f- basically the fruit of the U.S. 
And that's why walking through Pennsylvania and all of those states, you see so many apple orchards. Mm. So if you look up the story of Johnny Appleseed, he was a real person. Yeah. His last name wasn't Appleseed. Yeah, but. no. But, but, so, so what's your favorite type of apple real quick? Um, I, I'm probably going to go with the Macintosh. I, 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 I'm going to go, I'm going to go classics, Red Orchard. Red Orchard? Granny, I, I, I like, you know how I am. I love apple juice. I, I'm an apple person. Oh, yeah. All right, here, here's one that a lot of people like, but you and I are not, not this person. Strawberry? Right? No. Coffee beans. Ah. Uh, oh. I, so, no, so, no, like, default. I want to go with Columbia. Maybe, maybe, maybe because of how much like they export and like all that plus another drug that we can't mention. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but defaults are always the best, so might as well go with Columbia. You're gonna stick with Columbia. Not a bad guess because they do they do produce probably more than anyone else right now. Yeah. But it's because of the climate that's equal to this. You got to jump across to Africa, and it's in Ethiopia is where this came out of, and the English are the ones that pulled it. Out of uh, out of Africa and then brought it to the U.S. and then made it uh, a major export coming out of uh, South America or Central America. Yeah. So 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 did it say like 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 what made the jump from like Africa to 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 like South America? Well, it was the English. Um, the English brought it over and then they're they're the ones that created it uh, in, in that in that region. Okay. It wasn't uh, originated from that region. It came out of Africa. And the climate in places like Colombia and Central Central America, uh, the bean could really flourish. Okay. So, cool. All right. Um, and in and one of the things that they found out that uh, that keeps keeps people awake, it was a goat herder named Call D discovered that coffee's potential when his goats wouldn't go to sleep after eating the beans of wild coffee plants. So it started with them eating it to try and stay awake, and then it turned into a drink. Wow. So, so he used it as a stimulant in, in Ethiopia, and then they, then they turned it into a drink. So That's, in, that's incredible. All right, here we go. I, I only got like two more for you. Um, how about the pineapple? Oh, pineapple. I really want to say, no, it's not a... Oh, this is definitely like another like 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 I'm gonna say South Southeast Asia. Mm, this this one actually is Brazil and Paraguay. See, and, and I I when I think of pineapple, I only think of Hawaii. Yeah, like maybe maybe be, be, because because think like the Dull Headquarters is right there mm. in 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 Hawaii. I so. mean, the Hawaii farms are huge, or the pineapple farms in Hawaii are huge. So, but it actually it actually comes out of Brazil and Paraguay, and it was found throughout the Caribbean. Um, the first European encounter of the pineapple was Columbus in 1493. Uh, the Portuguese took the fruit from Brazil and introduced it into India in 1550. The Spanish spread it from Latin America to the Philippines. So that's how it became into the islands of the Philippines and the Hawaiians and all of those. Mm. All right. What what food you got? I, that's that's kind of the origins of some of the fruits that we have. Yeah. So so I so I decided to go with like 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 foods that that we that we consume like on an everyday basis. By we I mean my, mainly I and my dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so the first food that I went with was the French fries. Oh, I love me some French Classic fries. Classic staple right there. Yeah, I love me Mc, some. Uh, get, 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 get what's, your, Mc, what's your favorite fry? Mickey in, D's in, in town. Uh, of all fries in town, okay, Hazel's Hazel's is best. Like like just for St. Augustine. I'm gonna tell you, it's Haz, Hazel's, Meehan's. Oh, because they they got that oh, they got that little truffle stuff on them. Oh yeah, like the Parmesan and, cheese. Parmesan on cheese, and they I be mean, so it's it's Hazel's, Meehan's, and then when you say Mickey D's, it's got to be hot and right out. Oh yes, because Mickey D's fails like in about sixty four seconds. Yeah, uh, I, 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 so I actually went to make like McDonald's a lot. Like, mm-hmm. like it's, it's probably more like eighty percent of the time you you gonna get floppy fries. Yeah, I mean, you know, I like crispies. So yeah, but 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 next, but next time apparently ask, ask for like no salt. They'll make it every time. Oh, that way that way they make it 
and it's it's hot and fresh. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. So anyway, so back to origins. So, so so obviously French fries. Okay, French fries. Where did it come from? Not it from, come France. from France. I, I'm I'm assuming it's a U.S. thing. You're wrong about that as it's well. It's not. Yeah. So it's actually so so actually was so apparently this is an urban legend. So apparently, so this was developed in Belgium. Like, that's confirmed. Okay. But the urban legend part comes from the 1600s, where, where, where villagers in, 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 in the Meuse vill- Valley uh, will often eat, like, small fishes from, from the river. Like, they, like they, they cut them up, fry them up, then eat them. But during the winter time, the, the river froze up. So they, so they have to use, like, the, the, the local root plant, which was potatoes. And they actually cut them up the same way that they do for the fries, and oh, the same way they do for the fish, and actually fry it, and that and that's how like the French fries got got started allegedly, mm-hmm. and and actually and, and when it comes to America, like like, like how do we populate it? When when the Americans were sent over f- uh, for World War One, when they were self- when they were stationed in Belgium, they were introduced to French fries. Wow! So early 1900s, and then we brought it back. Yeah. Oh, I had no idea about that. So, so that that's cool. Yeah, French, French. I love French fries. Oh yeah, they're they're, they're, they're always like a go to one. Like 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 even if it's like a classy establishment, mm-hmm. like 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 like, like Black Tux. If they have French fries that as like mm-hmm. as a side option, I'm just gonna go for a French yeah, fries. Yeah, French fries. French fries are a safe bet. Yeah, always a safe bet. Mm-hmm. All right, here's the safest bet of all, uh, in in our world. Pizza. Uh yes. All right. Pizza dates back thousands of years. But believe it or not, its roots are traced back to ancient Egypt, mm. not Italy. And it goes back to the flatbreads that the ancient Egyptians would do. Um, the modern pizza uh, with the tomato sauce and cheese and toppings was born along the western coast of Italy. So with the red red sauce is when it became, uh, you know, the city of Naples is where pizza became became uh, so popular. Wow. And obviously the Italians that came over uh, in the early 1900s brought that with them to the U.S. And it was, a, it was a simple meal to make in a lot of ways, and that's how it became so popular in the U.S. too. Yeah. All right. What, and what, and no, 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 hold on. So, so, so you mentioned about like, 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 so you've been to Rome, correct? Like, a, what, 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 what? Yeah. What, yeah. How, and how was the pizza there? Like, have you tried any? They serve it different. Like, you know how we serve it in slices? Mm-hmm. They give you a whole pie, and then they give you a knife and a fork. You know, and I'm not that guy. I'm a guy who likes to hold on to his pizza. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very Americanized. And, and just to confirm, they gave you, like, a knife and fork. They didn't give you, like, a roller thing like that. No, no, they didn't. Uh, it's not like at, at Tom's Pizza where you get the cutter and you can cut it up and stuff like that. We no, need to go back. like that. In case you're wondering, Tom's Pizza is down in my hometown. Of you Durant. have to go there if, if you've never been. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of cool. You you it comes. It, those are the pizza squares, which you know for some reason are yummier. Um, all right, all right. In town, favorite pizza. Favorite pizza. I'm gonna say 900 degree pizza. Yeah, 900 degree. They used they used to be our sponsor. They're stepping away right now, but Cheshire, same owner, uh, is still sponsoring us. But 900 degree pizza is. Pretty phenomenal. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go go like a top three because I love Augies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can't 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 go away from Augies and Carmelos. Oh yeah, I, I have to agree pizza with that. Pizza Times not not in my top three. No, I mean I, I definitely think like Pizza Times like a bit overrated. Like like like, like, like especially when they just show off like number two pizza pizza place in the U S. Like like Man. just like yeah, everybody wow. else is tied for first. Um, but uh, no, so I mean my my order my order is uh, and I don't I tell you what. As far as a chain goes, and I don't know if they're a chain, Paisano's has the four pepperoni pizza. Yeah, they they are, they are a chain, but I agree with you that like they that, if, like that pizza is amazing. If, if but, I have to give a, an award to a chain, it goes to Paisano's. Mm-hmm. So. If, if but 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 be honest, if if if, if they had a, a thin crust style of of the ultimate pepperoni, mm. how would you feel? Uh, that would that would push it that would push it up that would push it up right there. <laughs> I agree with that. All right, all right. What's your other food you got? Ice uh, cream. Yes, exactly right. Congrats. Okay, congratulations. Right. So, so obviously, so we all have our favorite flavors of ice cream. Mine's vanilla because I'm basic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so basic. So there was a lot to this. Like, 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 like it wasn't just like oh, it was just like one event. Like there was like nuance to this. 
which is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so obviously, so so the first like origin comes from a men- a guy that you mentioned earlier, Marco Polo. Oh yeah. When when he brought it back from the Far East. So, so apparently, uh, it was so apparently like, the earliest known thing that led to the star of ice cream was in Rome from somewhere between 54 BC to 68 BC. Oh, sorry, 68 BC to 54 BC because because technically BC is going backwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, so apparently, ice was harvested from nearby mountains and held and held in heights in ice houses, deep pits covered with straw. This practice of keeping Ice in lieu of refrigeration will be common for centuries to come. So then the next big thing was in 1618 from around 907, uh, it, the Tang Dynasty in China is are believed to be the first to eat frozen milk-like confections, basically this introduction of ice cream. Got it. So they're the first to bring the cream mm-hmm. to the table. Yeah. yeah. Okay? Yeah, and, and basically this version was made of like either cow, goat, or buffalo milk that was actually heated with flour, and and who milks a buffalo? We are those. No, I mean, I mean, who's brave enough to like stand next to a buffalo and try and milk a buffalo? Uh, That's something I'd like to see. I mean, I mean, definitely have to be someone who who basically create create like a straw cup for yeah. their groin. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was in what year? In this late six 16? six eighteen six eighteen that far back. Yeah. Wow. And 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 also apparently in in medieval times, uh, uh, like Arabians actually actually started uh, started like drinking this ice ice refreshments called a uh, sherbet, or or, or, or or sharbet. Like so basically, it's so basically like the, the Arabians helped introduce like the concept of, like sherbets. Okay. As well, like so so, so I, it became more fruity at that point. Yeah, it was like an icy fruity thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I I can go like a bunch longer than this, but like th- like so, so so I'm reading like this article for like PBS. Uh-huh. It is long. <laughs> no ice cream. I mean, hey, you know it's what's important to the society. I mean, ice cream. Ice cream's important. Yeah. So all right, another thing that's important to our society in the U.S. and we kind of stuck to like the big six, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, hamburgers. Huge controversy over hamburgers, uh, especially with me. Like right. you, you, like you, you get over me for not liking like like processed like. like I don't like, understand how you don't like hamburgers. It's just it's it just basically just so so I eat like a lot of steaks. Like my dad's steaks are good, but unfortunately, when, when it just gets like 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 processed and 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 it's just it, ground up. I know, but but the the taste feels a bit off. Please, so it's a texture thing. With yes. Okay. If, if, All right. I if, can go with that. If anyone in the comments understands, please, please give my su- please support yeah, me. If, if there's non hamburger people out there that do you know. that does like steak. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, yeah, because you love you you like beef. It's not like you don't like beef. It's just right. a, it's just a texture of it. Okay. All right. Read. So all right. Claims of the invention of the hamburger. Okay. They occur between 1885 and 1904. Uh, the one that makes the most sense to me was the first, the birth of the burger. And the story starts in Canton, Ohio. Natives Frank and Charles Minch. All right. Uh, they were food vendors at the 1885 Erie County Fair outside of Buffalo. And it was called the Hamburg Fair. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're you with me so far? I hear you. All right. Legend has it. That the court that um, that the Minch ran out of their signature menu item, pork sausage sandwiches. Their local supplier, Hamburg Butcher Andrew Klein, was reluctant to butcher more hogs during the period in unseasonable late summer, and he suggested to substitute the use of ground beef. Mm. Okay, so it's Hamburg. It was pork. That's why a hamburger is made of beef. Are you, are you with me still? I hear you. All right, the brothers brothers fired up some, and both found it dry and bland. They added coffee, brown sugar, and other ingredients to create a unique taste. The original sandwich were sold with just ketchup, a slice of onions. With the new success of their beef sandwich, they christened the hamburger after the Erie County Fair hometown Hamburg. National birth of the Burger Day 
is September 18th to honor the invention of the burger in 1885 at the Hamburg Fair. All right? That's only one Ugh. of the version, and I love that version. Yeah. So that's the one I'm going to stick with because I love the whole detail of it. Yeah, I, I, I'm definitely going to have to agree with that as well. Like, Okay. All right. There was a Hamburg steak that came out of Germany. It was served by Germans and Hamburg State. Now we're going to Seymour, Wisconsin. Okay? Seymour, Wisconsin. Hamburg steaks. And they were sold with like a gravy and just a steak on it and stuff like that. So by a gentleman by the name of Charlie Nagreen, all right, out of Seymour, Wisconsin, he was at the Outagamie County Fair. All right? All right, he was selling Hamburg steaks. He realized that you couldn't walk around the fair. So he stuck the Hamburg steak, which was basically mince meat, mince steak, put together. And he sold it between two slices of bread at this fair. All right, and he is called Hamburger Charlie. And in, still to this day in Seymour, Wisconsin, they claim that that's the home. And Hamburger Charlie is the person who started the hamburger. Still like story number one. Story number three, St. Louis, World's Fair, 1904. All right? Fletcher Davis, better known as Old Dave, who claimed to come up with the idea of ground beef between two pieces of Texas toast. When only his customers was too much in a hurry to sit down for a meal, the customer walked away with his hamburger steak, and it seemed to be content on, on him. So also, Old Dave's hamburger sandwich is still sold today uh, in, in Athens, Texas. Which story do you like better? I'm, uh, the first one's always the best one. Yeah, I'm going with the first one, too. Yeah. I, 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 I think... I think Canton, Ohio is the official home of the hamburger. Yeah. I think we can declare it right here on Bollocks. It's the official home because that story is just so much better. Bollocks seal, seal of approval. They have the Bollocks seal of approval. The hamburger started in Canton, Toast Ohio. Toast to that. Yep. Cheers. Cheers to that. All right, what you got, Blake? You got, you got some nuggets our way? Yep. So, so, so and by good. the way, we stuck with all our major food groups in the Blevins family. We're pretty <laughs> simple. Well, well, we didn't touch soda, so but that'll be that'll be episode for another yeah, time. Yeah, that's a different that's a different story yeah. altogether. All right, so, 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 fortunately, so my brother and I always love ourselves a good chicken nugget if if we absolutely need to. Mm-hmm. Favorite, favorite one, obviously McDonald's. Okay, they have the best ones. So I don't chick- know public Publix. They're little bites. Yeah, they, they are addicting though. Yeah, right? you can even like popcorn. Those popcorn. Chicken. Why do you think it's called popcorn chicken then? Oh, that's good stuff. All right. All right. So, chicken nugget. Yeah. It was invented in the 1950s by Robert C. Baker, a, a, food, a food science professor at Cornell University. And, and, and he actually published it as, as an unpatented academic work. So, 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 so he intentionally made this like, 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 like for, for educational purposes. So, it was a, sci- it was a project. Yeah. Okay. That, that, like that was insane. and now we're all, now we're addicted to chicken chicken tenders it's insane. chicken nuggets yeah yeah so basically so so, so it was just a bite sized piece of chicken like coated in like obviously coated and battered deep fried mm-hmm. and, and, and and its original name was called the chicken crispy okay yeah so basically so at the time the meat industry was 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 facing uh like they were worried about like 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 all this like unused meat like and like, and, like and uh, and ba- basically parts they, is parts. Yeah, like so basically, so basically, two problems the meat industry was facing at the time was was being able to clump ground meat together without skin and producing a, a batter that would that would both like deep fry and frozen w- without being like detached, like 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 like, 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 like trying to keep like the meat and batter and where, together. Where was this? This was out of Cornell. Cornell University. Okay. Yeah, and and basically, and basically like like and basically like uh, Baker's like um, like innovations like solve these problems. It by basically like making like like chicken nuggets into like any shape possible, by, by by first like actually coating the meat with with like vinegar, salts, grains, powder. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I've eaten the dinosaur nuggets. They don't taste as good, man. I know. You know, it just it just kind of weirds me out when they shape the nuggets wrong. 
but but you give that to Ty like every single like every other week. He doesn't though. get he doesn't get dinosaur shaped nuggets ever. I'm joking. I know, but it's basically yeah. but, it's, but but it's from the same people though. Mm-hmm. So yeah. All right. So Blake, when when I was in high school, and I and I actually did this through college too. Um, there was there was a famous baseball player by the name of Wade Boggs. Mm-hmm. Wade Boggs was one of the best hitters through the '80s, through the 1980s, and I had read. In a story that he ate chicken every day before a game. So I decided to try this. Oh, no. I got a hit that day. All right. I went on a 28-game hitting streak in high school. <laughs> I set my high school hits record. And I can tell you this, and, and Thelma will back it up, and all my friends will back it up. If I didn't eat chicken, we went into panic mode. Like, we sent people to go get me chicken before the game. Wait, hold on. Did, I, the, I this has to be specifically, like, fried or anything no, like no. that? No, I mean, a lot of times it was just McDonald's nuggets. One time we were really desperate, and I had chicken noodle soup. Um, you know, so, but it was, you know, just became one of those superstitions that athletes have. And I, I can tell you, I did it all the way through high school and most of my college career thinking it was the chicken that got the hits and not me. Yeah. And then just to confirm, Becca, we will not reshape your nugs. No, we're not doing that. We're not we're not making uh we're not doing uh dinosaur nuggets anymore. And here's the thing that bothers me, and you tell me what the difference is. What's the difference between a chicken nugget and a boneless chicken wing? Aren't they the same thing? I think they so, 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 more, I, so I think they, they actually, make you feel more adult when you say, "Oh, I have the boneless chicken wings." I so I actually think like they come from like 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 the, like like two different like sections of the chicken. I think, okay. I believe, but I'm not sure. But they are basically the same thing. All right, but, but I guess like one isn't like sauced. All right, last food I'm going to talk about. This is the only food that almost created a war. Do you know which food I'm talking about? Who my my instincts probably have to say chocolate. It is chocolate. All right. The Spanish um, came and got the the cocoa from uh, cocoa from the Aztecs. Mm. It was so amazing when they brought it back. The royalty kept chocolate from their own people, and only the monks were allowed to do this. It became an almost battle between uh, different religions when monks were fasting in Spain. Hmm. They would use the cocoa as a drink, and half of the religion almost went to war with the other half because the other half said it was a drink and it wasn't a food, and it almost became a war. That's not just it. Spain kept the secret of chocolate from the rest of Europe for 100 years. Oh. They brought they brought chocolate back. They was this was this food is so amazing that and I and you don't like chocolate. I don't like chocolate. I'm sorry. You don't like chocolate. I love chocolate. I love all types of chocolate. But they brought it back from the Aztecs and kept it for 100 years from the rest of Europe. And if it wasn't for a wedding between royalties between Spain and France, it wouldn't. It probably would have lasted longer than that. Mm-hmm. That tells you how great a food chocolate is. Yeah, but but I'm guessing I'm only one of the few, like two percenters that don't actually like chocolate. All right, of the foods we mentioned, Blake. All right, and everybody out there, everybody out there who's uh, who's watching. I want you to participate in this. Of the foods we're mentioning, you can only keep two of them. Oh, no. Okay? You can only keep two of them. All right? That means, what did we mention? We mentioned chocolate. We, so we mentioned chocolate. French, French fries. Fun. Ice cream. Pizza. Hamburger. And I feel like we're missing Chicken one. nuggets. Chicken nuggets. Okay? All right? So, Blake, you can pick two. I can tell you right now, one of mine's chocolate. I got to keep chocolate. Yeah. You can only pick two. For, for, for my own sanity and mainly for my brother's sanity, I'm, I'm, so I'm, so I'm going to keep chicken nuggets and french fries. You're going to keep chicken nuggets. 
Yeah, okay. kip, chicken nuggets and French fries. Chicken nuggets. Oh, you you're, you're answering both. Yeah, right? yeah, okay. like you're like answering both right away because you, chicken you, nuggets you, and French fries. You 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 know how mad Ty Ty gets when he doesn't have the, those two things, right? Oh, man, man, I, I don't. I, man, giving up pizza is going to be hard. All right, now I'm stuck between burgers and pizza. All right, and I think I think I'm going to cheat a little bit on this. Oh no! Don't 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 tell me you don't, I, don't tell me you don't get 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 like one of those like specialty like burger pizzas that that actually has like like burger meat on it. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you can put a lot of different toppings on pizza. Mm -hmm. So if we made it just plain pizza, pizzas out, I'm going with burgers. Yeah. Okay, but if I'm allowed to play with the toppings, mm -hmm. then I'm gonna have to go with pizza. Okay. Is that, is that a cheat or is it? No, I mean, no, that's I'll not let you make the rule. Which I mean, can I put toppings on my pizza? One rule. Once, like, so, 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 so for every 10 pizzas that they can customize, you have to get one that, that, that has pineapple on it. It's hamburgers. And pizza's out. Pizza's out. I can't do, I can't do pineapple. Oh, what's wrong with that? Come on. I can't on. do pineapple. I, can I pick it off and eat them individually? Because pineapple, I love pineapple individually. So, so you, they so don't you, belong on a pizza. You, so, you, so, so at least, like, there has to be, like, at least one slice with one slices of pineapple on it. Right. You, you just have to take that one bite, then you can take the rest of it off. All right. Mar Barbagine kept pizza and hamburgers. I'm not opposed to that. But, uh, but we'll say that pi pineapple pizza is much more legitimate than Chicago-style pizza. Uh, yeah. Have you tried Detroit-style? I haven't. It's, 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 it's thick, too, but it's, it's more like a meal. Like, one slice is an entire meal. But, but, but Chicago-style is more, 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 more lasagna than, like, so we had it when, when we went to the Cubs game. It was, yeah, it wasn't great. No. It wasn't great. I, I'm a New York style pizza guy. I, I like the thin pizza. So sorry, sorry, Melissa. All right, uh, Becca went with uh, burgers and ice cream. So um, all right, guess what? We got to talk about our sponsors again. That I'm a great food topic, Blake. You brought a lot of a lot of cool information to us. Um, chicken nuggets, 1950s, huh? Yeah, Cornell, Cornell. Mm -hmm. All right, nerds. Um, all right, here we go. Palm Valley Golf Course, um, just a wonderful place. Great people. Um, best driving range in town. Uh, it is the most cost-effective way. If you want to learn how to play golf. Look I at your out. camera, Dad. Oh, I'm looking at the camera? Okay. Uh, if you want to learn, thank you, Blake, for producer extraordinaire. Uh, if you want to learn how to play golf, this is where you want to go. You want to go to Palm Valley Golf Club. Next, River and Fort. Wonderful people again. And that's, that's the beauty of our sponsors. All of them participate in, in the city that we're involved in. They um, care about where they live. They all live here locally. Uh, all our sponsors are here locally. And River and Fort, these guys, they got a new restaurant coming too. New Italian restaurant. If you're wondering what's happening besides Harry's, these are the guys. They're going to bring us an amazing Italian restaurant too. River and Fort, three decks. If you're a, a, a bourbon drinker, they have the best bourbon selection in town. And the menu is phenomenal we we did a birthday celebration there and they took amazing care of us uh st augustine pirate museum st augustine pirate museum they have over 800 artifacts they have an original jolly roger which is one of the few that's left in the entire world get down there if you haven't been there get down there and check it out Meehan's irish pub and i know we talk about this but i can tell you in my opinion blake we just talked about food Best bar food in town. They have really good food. Best bar food in town. Mac and uh, cheese, fries, I, I, I wings. went through their entire menu, their uh, shepherd's pie. They have a, a, a curry that is amazing. Their mac and cheese appetizer. It's almost right there with River and Fort Tower. River and Fort Tower feeds a lot of people. But that mac and cheese, it's the best mac and cheese in town outside of Blake's. Blake makes an amazing black mac and cheese. I'm not going to lie. All right. Uh, a Bear Kresge, speaking of amazing, A Bear Kresge and Associates, these guys keep me out of trouble. Um, they kept me out of trouble as they well. They kept you out of trouble. You, you got in trouble last year. Well, so, well not by that. You got in not, trouble with me last yeah. year. Because, uh, But A Bear Kresge and Associates, these guys take care of me. They take care of Blake. They take care of my parents. They take care of most of my friends because my friends are smart about they can – Save money by spending the money on a professional. A Bear Kresge and Associates. All right. Uh, Cheshire Customs and Collision. Great. I got it right that time. Blake, give me a thumbs up. Um, they, they have an amazing body shop there. They're located off of Holmes Boulevard, a state-of-the-art facility. 
if you want to want to get your car, give it a good facelift, go see Chris over there. They'll take great care of you. All right, here we go. We do a lot of drinking on this show. We do whiskeys of the week many, many times. These guys are our guys, and they are definitely our guys here in town. St. Augustine Distillery and City Gates Distillery. These guys know what they're doing. They know how to make the liquors. They know how to make uh, a variety of different things. Go check out their tasting. They're, you're going to find something you like in in their uh, stores, in their retail, and, of course, you're going to love and enjoy the tour. All right, Blake, guess what time it is. It's time to talk about cars. Honk, honk. All right, are you ready? Honk. I heard a honk, honk, but it didn't come through on my side. Honk, honk. Uh, there you go. Um, all right, Blake. I have the timeline of cars, and all I did was throw it out there. And, and what we do here on the show, so we don't uh, worse just like when Blake brings me information, I'm surprised. When I bring him information, he's surprised. Same with Lenny. We don't talk about. We just put a topic out there, and then we determine which way the topic goes. When I did the topic, I stuck more to a timeline of automobiles and the people that created them. Blake went individual cars. Is that correct? Or the uh, so, or or like inventions within the cars? Yeah. So so okay. so, I, so I actually went with like so so I went with like 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 six inventions like that that we commonly use today. Okay. Like from from, from like four antiques to like to like two modern ones. All right. All right, Blake. I'm going to start us off because I'm going to go the first written idea of a car. Okay. So we're not talking the Jetsons or something like that. The first written where it's been put on a pen pencil and written down on a piece of paper. Maybe not a pencil, probably a, a paintbrush or an ink. All right. It goes back to the year. Are you prepared for this? I, I, I'm holding down to my chair. Okay. 1478. Oh, yeah. Little guy, not just a Ninja Turtle, a very talented guy, Leonardo da Vinci. He actually put on paper a self-propelled car. All right? It, obviously, it's never been built. They did a replica of it in 2004, and it was more, looked more like a cart, but it didn't have seats in it, didn't have a steering wheel, but it was self-propelled, and it's actually, uh, you can find this. It's crafted, and it, like I said, it was built from Da Vinci's drawings uh, in the Muse Institute of Museum and History of Science in Florence, Italy. Wow. When I was in Florence, I didn't know about this. Now I'm upset I didn't go look at this. Now, wait, hold on. So, so, so 1478. Did, that's insane. Like, did, did Leonardo da Vinci ever, ever have, like, any, like, official relationships? Like, 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 girlfriends or anything like that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. But because it sounds like, 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 from, like, like, so no, like, 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 he invented, like, a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, so, so I was just thinking, like, he must, he must have, like, a weight, like, 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 he must have, like, like, barely like any time to hang out with, with, with his girlfriends and thank god he didn't because well, he, he had relationships i believe with not just girlfriends so it was very common at the time to flow genders let's put it that way so so leonardo da vinci was woke then no no he he was probably what we would consider bisexual if you had to guess that but it was very common, and it wasn't wasn't necessarily an unusual thing for the time. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, Blake. What what do you got? What was your first? What What are your six? You said you had six items. Let's do your six items because we only have like A little eight bit minutes time. left. So yeah. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that. All right. All right. So 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 my six inventions. Do Do you want me to list them off right now, or do you just want me to just like? item and explain okay what how did you decide on which six did they pop up on you or i mean obviously to me an invention in a car is i don't know if you did the combustible engine if you went no no I, I so so i didn't go with that like so okay so, so, so the combust so. and I'll, I'll do the combustible engine because that kind of got it started with everything uh and that to basically come up with a combustible engine I'm going to give that one to Otto, uh, Nicholas August Otto. And he basically came up with an 1867 in Germany, um, the combustion engine. Mm. So it didn't burn at that time. It didn't burn gasoline, but it had a piston chamber, which creates the modern. And that was in 1867. So what, what, what was your, 
What was your six inventions? Go. So my six inventions were the steering wheel. Very important. Essential. The brakes. Kind of important. Airbags. Okay, I know exactly what year those came in. Headlights. Also very important. Then, then, then I have two modern ones that, that, we, that we use today. Cruise control. Okay. And a backup camera. All right, cruise control came in early. Let's, let's go with that one because I think that one's going to surprise people. All right. Cruise, cruise con- control actually came in pretty early, even though it's a very modern thing on normal cars. Yeah. What year do you have for cruise control? So... So 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 it says seventeen eighty eight like like uh, steam engines like 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 two like two inventors were able to control steam engines like like based on that. In nineteen forty eight, there was a blind inventor named R- Ralph Teeter. He he came up he he basically came up with the idea of of modern cruise control, where what what also known as a speedo stat or or or, or temper tat, mm-hmm. and and it basically came up he came up with the idea, due, due to being frustrated by. By his like, by his like driver's habit, like 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 like, like he had his own driver, oh, like of, 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 of like speeding up, slowing down oh, as so he talked. Oh, so he had a driver. It was frustrating him because his driver had an unsteady foot. Yeah. Oh, so it wasn't him driving. No, it wasn't him driving. He was so, just being elitist and a pain in the ass. Yes. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. yeah. So basically, so so basically, so so he invented in 1948. Uh, in in the first car to to be installed with 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 with, with, with his speedo style was the 1958 Chrysler Imperial, and at, at the time it was called Autopilot. Okay. And 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 it's basically so it's, and it basically used like a speed control on the dial on the dashboard. And it, it was able to calculate it using the ground speed from the rotating speedometer cable, and use the and use a screwdriver electric mode to to vary the throttle position as needed. Mm-hmm. Now now. Now Cadillac later on renamed like a system into cruise control, and th- and then that's how that's how we got cruise control today. All right, um, I'm going to throw one at you um, that's uh, also a sports stat. Uh, the very first speed limit, very first speed limit came into effect in 1906 in the state of Alabama. Ooh, yeah. The maximum speed limit in the state of Alabama in 1906 was eight miles an hour. Oy. All right. What's your next one? You said you mentioned the steering wheel. All right. So steering wheel. Yes. What, what year do you have on that one? Because so, I actually have that one. I want to see if yeah. our, our, our data matches. So, so apparently the first steering wheel came out in like the 1890s. The first one was uh, was from Al- Alfred Vacheron in France in 1894. Okay. In, and then in 1898, uh, Panel was about to uh, was set about to fit steering wheels on, onto one of its production cars. In 1910, it uh, it basically became the standard in Europe. Okay, and then and, and my my year for the steering wheel was up it, right in the middle of that was 1900, and it replaced the steering tiller. All right, um, still got three minutes. Yeah. Uh, what's your other three? All right, all right. So my so the next one, uh, I'm gonna go with uh, airbags or brakes. Let's do brakes. They're way more important. Cool, got. It. Airbags right. were 1974 is what I got. What'd you have for that? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So the first brake system was was wooden block brakes. Uh, yeah, it's basically so 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 it was the first one. It was actually developed by the Michelin. Uh, hold on, so it was actually uh, developed by the Michelin Bros in 1890 when when they were like the. Uh, so the brake went directly on the on the tire. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Then basically, then 1902, it it, it became the, it became the mechanical drum. So, so okay. it's just like so like so like it actually it actually was created in 1899. Then was developed in 1902 by by Louis Renault, okay. the Renault manufacturing company. The car company. Okay, go. All right, um, all right. I got the car radio. First introduced in 1924. Hmm. All right, what you got? Go. All right, uh, let's do back. We're doing camp. speed round on on cars, by the way, in case right. in case our audience. Uh, all right, all right, let's do a backup camera. The first backup camera like, actually came in part with, with the 1956 Buick uh, Con- a Centurion concept car. So 1956, they had they already started with a backup camera. Then 1972 Volvo uh, like uh, showed off the Volvo Experimental Safety Car. How, however. And so basically, the first production automobile car to come out with a backup camera was the 1991 Toyota Soar, which was only available in Japan and, and, and wasn't on like the U.S. version of the car, the Lexus SC. Yep. 
All right. Um, all right, we got one minute. Uh, airbags, I said, was 1974. Is that year you had? Uh, let me check. Go, 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 go ahead and read. Go ahead and read. All right. Out. All right, here we go. We're talking about seatbelts. Seatbelts, uh, the first state, take a guess, first state to become uh, making it a law requiring you to use seatbelts. I remember when it became a law in Florida. I can tell you that. All right. All right, so airbags. So, so airbags. Which, which, answer the question. Which state? Uh, I'm, so I'm, so I'm going to say Michigan. Yeah, it's actually New York, 19, 1984. All right, Michigan was. I'm sorry, you said airbags. What? All right, so 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 airbags. So so air, so the first like the first like automated like so the on like the first like airbags that actually had sensors in it was 1968. The first car to actually to actually come like like standard like 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 commercially was was the was 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 with the Ford Motor Company. Then General Motors in 1973 started was started like putting airbags in the in the Chevrolet Impalas, for, but it was only for government cars only. Only for government cars. Yes. All right. First state to actually require seatbelts. Okay, where the car had to have the option to have a seatbelt. They didn't enforce it that you had to wear it, but it had to be in the car. And that was Wisconsin. That was in 1962. All right. So it's 7:34, Dad. All right. You know what, Blake? You did an amazing job. I appreciate you being my guy this week. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you did some laugh and learn. Uh, I can tell you this. I learned a lot. Thank you, Blake, for bringing great information. Um, Love you, Dad. Always enjoyed. Love you, buddy. Um, and appreciate you guys. Make sure you hit the share. Support our uh, sponsors out there. We want to get this uh, bollocks going. And like us on YouTube. Go to where you need to be. Like us on Instagram. We appreciate you guys. This is Bollocks Talks and Tangents. We'll see you next week.